He's been out of office since 2020, right? 2021. And why did they wait till just now to, and to drop all this on him? It's obvious campaign interference. The Justice Department, for instance, is wanting, as I said, to move this, their election sham case, uh, begin it in January. I think they want to do jury selection in December. So four months from now, more or less, right? And President Trump and his attorneys filed a brief opposing it. And I'm going to read you a little bit from the brief because I, I don't want, because um, my guess is Trump isn't going to get what he's asking for from this judge. But, you know, the media is never going to tell you how outrageous it is. He's not going to get what he's asking for. And I want you to know just how outrageous what the Justice Department is doing against Trump here by reading a little bit from this brief. Uh, the, and, it, and it starts off as the follows. The prompt, is, and this brief was filed this week, um, asking for a trial date of April 2026, not January 2024 for this complex case. The prompt disposition of criminal cases is to be commended and encouraged, but in reaching that result, a defendant charged with a serious crime must not be stripped of his right to have sufficient time to advise with counsel and prepare his defense. To do that is not to proceed promptly in the calm spirit of regulated justice, but to go forward with the haste of the mob. And that was a, a quote from a case. And his lawyers go on to say, this is an unprecedented case in American history. The incumbent administration has targeted its primary political opponent and leading candidate in the upcoming presidential election with criminal prosecution. The administration has devoted tens of millions of dollars to this effort, creating a special counsel's office with dozens of employees, many of whom are apparently assigned full-time to this case and this case alone. Taking full advantage of the administration's blank check, the government spent over two and a half years investigating this matter. It, among other things, interviewed and subpoenaed hundreds of witnesses, executed over 40 search warrants, um, and compiled information from countless individual sources. The government included some, but not all, of these materials in a massive 8.5 terabyte initial production totaling over 11.5 million pages, together with native files, recordings, and other electronic data not amenable to pagination. So meaning if someone, it's, let's say it's an audio tape, it's, it's a, you have to listen to it, you can't print it out. In this district, ordinary order, and this district being the District of Columbia, ordinary order, when faced with such an overwhelming discover, with such overwhelming discovery, is to set a reasonable trial schedule commensurate with the size and scope of discovery and complexity of the legal issues. The government rejects this sensible approach. Instead, it seeks a trial calendar more rapid than, more, than most no-document misdemeanors. Okay. They want to move cases, this case faster than no document misdemeanors. So a misdemeanor case, right, a low-level criminal case where no documents are at issue. And they're requesting just four months from the beginning of discovery to jury selection. The government's objective is clear, to deny President Trump and his counsel a fair ability to prepare for trial. The court should deny the government's request. The public interest lies in justice and fair trial, not a rush to judgment. Moreover, if the rights to due process and counsel are to mean anything, a defendant must have adequate time to defend himself. The Speedy Trial Act embraces the considerations, and so too should the court. And so accordingly, they ask for an April 26, April 2026, 2026 trial date. And there, are t as I said, there are... Two other cases up in New York, civil cases targeting Trump. Uh, he has um, now four sets of criminal charges facing him, all of which they want to adjudicate in the middle of the primary. And by the way, he's been out of office since 2020, right? 2021. And why did they wait till just now to, and to drop all this on him? It's obvious campaign interference.
obvious campaign interference. And they highlight that if you were to stack the uh, 11.5 million pages of documents, you know, on top of each other, it would be 4,822 feet. And that would be significantly bigger, probably eight times bigger than the Washington Monument in terms of length. So it's a lot of documents. And of course, this case isn't even a usual case. There's been nothing like it in American history. And that's what also the lawyers point out. They say this case is not just complex or unusual, it is terra incognita. The protests at, capital, at the Capitol aside, no person in the history of our country has ever been charged with conspiracies related to the Electoral Count Act. No president has ever been charged with a crime for conduct committed while in office. No major party presidential candidate has ever been charged while in the middle of a campaign, and certainly not by a Justice Department serving his opponent. These and numerous other issues will be questions of first impression, requiring significant time for the parties to consider and brief and for the court to resolve. The proposed schedule provides that time, meaning the Trump's proposed schedule. The government's timeline does not. Consequently, the complexity and unusual nature of the case favors what President Trump's attorneys are trying to promote. And these are some of the details, and this is interesting. So I, I, this is why I'm going over this with you, because when the trial date is set, and I suspect that Judge Chutkin, the Obama appointee in this case, um, based on her comments at that hearing, uh, some of which I thought were um, unusual and a bit intemperate uh, given the circumstances she's under, uh, she wants to move as quickly as possible with this trial. And I suspect she's going to try to try it next year. But we'll see. Maybe she'll do the right thing. Indeed, the median time from commencement to termination of a jury tried 371 charge, I think that's a um, conspiracy charge, maybe, is 29.4 months, many times longer than the government's proposed schedule. And this reflects only the median, meaning half of all such cases take more time based on an individualized assessment of uh, discovery volume, complexity, and similar concerns. Now, Judge Kupkin, as the Trump attorneys carefully point out, allows far more time than the government proposes, even in cases involving protests at the Capitol. And there's one charge where it was 28, eight, 28 months from indictment to a stipulated bench trial on a four-page indictment. So it's over two years on a four-page indictment on a straightforward well, it depends how you see how and these, char these January 6th charges generally, but a relatively straightforward case. Another case, 21 months. Another case, 29 months. Another case, 24 months. So there's really no good reason to have these cases occur next year other than to try to rig an election. And the judges, in my case, should refuse. All of them, anyone who's involved in any of these cases, should have, and still should, refuse the Justice Department's desire to have them run effectively the presidential campaigns. I mean, Judge Shutkin has essentially told Trump he's going to be watching everything he says. And I've described how everything he says now can and will be used against him in a court of law. How can he campaign in those circumstances? Now, I don't know if this is legal or not, in the sense that you know, there's a legal basis for doing so, but I suspect courts have a lot of discretion here. If I were a judge, I'd look at this and say, you're not doing this in my courtroom, you're out. You want to do political fights against Trump, you go buy advertisements. You're not using my courtroom to run an election operation against the candidate you don't like. And that's the end of it. You don't like the ruling? Go appeal it. And as a matter of fact, Mr. Prosecutor, as a matter of fact, Miss Prosecutor, I'm referring you for 
discipline for abusing your offices to engage in politics and target people based on politics. If justice is done, the prosecutors behind these charges at the end of the day will be disbarred and face other criminal and civil investigations. From Jack Smith on down, and Garland of course as well, I'm not forgetting him. So Judicial Watch will continue to investigate and uncover and hold to account all of these prosecutions or prosecutors, these offices abusing the rule of law to target Trump and other innocents. Um, we have litigation already, for instance, against the Justice Department for the list of people who are working on these prosecutions that Donald Trump has highlighted or sp spending full time trying to put him in jail. Well, who are they? Why can't we know who they are? For the first time in my memory, you know, since the special counsel's been around, they're saying to us in court, we can't find out who's working for Jack Smith. Now, every once in a while, a name shows up on a pleading in these cases, and they say, well, that's someone you can have. That's a name you can have. But that doesn't tell us who's really running the show behind the scenes or who else is involved. I mean, there are U.S. attorneys or, or assistants to, to Smith who end up on court pleadings, and you see their names, and you can find out more about them. But what about others? You know why they don't want us to find out who they are? Because it's going to, be, given what happened with the Mueller operation, we're going to find out they're Democratic supporters, activists, and such, further highlighting the political nature of their unprecedented and, in my view, illicit prosecutions. I mean, the case in Georgia is based on a legal fiction to be clear. The cases in, up here in Washington, D.C. are based on legal fictions that ordinary business, in the case of New York, business and personal activity, in the case of Washington and Georgia, and I guess Miami, which the Mar-a-Lago, political, presidential, candidate, First Amendment activity, that's all, it's all perfectly legal behavior that they're trying to criminalize. And what happens, you know, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm concerned Trump's going to be in jail next year. Somehow, some way, they're going to get him in jail. And as I've highlighted, you know, the administration has long become, you know, is now officially a regime as far as I'm concerned. We're in a situation of not American politics or the American way, you know, truth, justice, and the American way. It's now um, regime politics run by folks who not only engage in unconstitutional behavior, but I would submit anti-constitutional behavior. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.